Settle in class, looks like you want to learn about the Barbarian, and I'm happy to whip that passion into something fierce. The Unbridled Warrior, the Brick House. Bigger, faster, and stronger too, the first member of our D&D crew. Most of their abilities revolve around hitting hard, hitting harder, and ignoring that they were hit. They're simple, but they're a solid foundation to build on. We'll start with mechanics, move into flavor and concept. Let's go! Barbarians have the highest HP, being the only class to roll a d12. That's compounded by their unarmored defense ability, which adds their dexterity modifier and their constitution modifier to their AC, as long as they aren't wearing armor. They can use the full list of weapons and get a bonus to checks and saves for strength and constitution, two stats whose limit they eventually break. They start with their primary feature, Rage. They enter a state of blinding emotion, getting advantage on strength checks and saves, and a bonus to strength-based damage. They also take half damage from bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing, which is most weapons. Eventually, Rage will even let them drop to 1 HP instead of 0 when taking a big hit, as long as they pass a con save. You know, that stat that you have a bonus to, and eventually break the limit with? The stronger you get, the more times a day you can rage, eventually becoming unlimited at level 20. As they level, their senses hone, giving cool bonuses like advantage on dex saves from sources they can see, or ignoring surprise with raw anger, or rolling initiative with advantage. The rest of their abilities include hitting more times around, hitting harder and harder on a crit, moving faster, and increasing their chance to hit in exchange for being hit easier. At level 3, 6, 10, and 14, your subclass gives you even more power. I'll throw them on the board as we talk about them, but before we get into that, I'd like to take a look at what we have as a base. The Barbarian is an unbridled monster in melee, absorbing damage and hitting back hard. The class is wonderful if you just want to wade into battle bashing until one side dies. Not much variety in play compared to others, but that's not a bad thing. Sometimes you just want a basic warrior. That said, you can go complex if you want. There are plenty of ways you can take them character-wise, especially if your DM allows for a little reflavoring. Don't get me wrong, a brute full of primal fury with skin like iron works wonders here. I always respect a classic, but you rip off the flavor text and this is just someone who's good at dodging danger and has a superpower mode. There's all sorts of reasons this could happen, but they'll probably depend on your subclass. So let's go ahead and get into them, and I'll try to inspire you with flavor options, okay? We'll start with the Ancestral Guardian. Ancestral Guardians call on spirits when they rage, traditionally members of their family or clan. The spirits target whoever you hit first each turn, giving them disadvantage if they attack someone other than you, and giving that not-you target resistance. At level 6, they can reduce damage to those you see within 30 feet, the amount increasing with your level, and eventually reflecting back to the attacker. At level 10, you can even ask your spirits a yes or no question about the future like you're casting Augury, or send one out to act as a scout a la clairvoyance. Once per short rest too, it's a pretty good recharge. A big weakness of Brutland miners in general is that there's nothing stopping an enemy from just ignoring them and going around, but the Ancestral Guardian says you will not. I will protect my allies just as those who came before me and they're here to make sure of it. Personally, I'd make the spirits to be the true power of your age. Instead of emotion, you're setting yourself aside so the spirits can guide your body. You could also turn that on its head though. Maybe these aren't your ancestors. You're a gravekeeper whose graveyard was destroyed and you took your tenants with you. Or make it divine, you made an ancient pact with a god of dueling who punishes those who ignore your challenge. Maybe it's not even an outside force. You're so was fragmented by some horrific accident, and you send out shards to bolster your allies. No matter how you do it, the subclass is perfect for a defender. Now for a more offensive defense, we have the Battle Rager, or as the dwarves call it, the Axe Idiot. Traditionally, it's a religious thing for a dwarven war god, so technically it's restricted to dwarves, but most people ignore that since wearing spiked armor isn't exactly hard to figure out. Yep, that's the subclass. You can use a bonus action to whack people with your spikes for an extra d4 plus strength. You deal 3 damage when you grapple someone, and at level 14, close range attackers also take 3 damage, they'll eventually get their con modifier and temporary HP whenever they use Reckless Attack, and get to dash as a bonus action at 10. Okay, look, let's be real here. This is the only subclass whose official title insults you for picking it. I grade classes based on whether they achieve the goal they're selling. Would someone who picked this fulfill the dream they have for themselves? Almost every subclass on record gets at least a passing grade in my book, but for the person who wants to storm into battle as a whirling ball of death, I'm sorry, but this subclass might be worse than not picking one at all. Because remember, unarmored defense relies on you being unarmored. I have to mention it, but I can't recommend it without a rework. I don't have alternate rage ideas specifically for the battle rager, so I'll take this opportunity to mention that your barbarian can easily draw power from another emotional overflow. Maybe one who loves bloodshed, becoming so euphoric they don't notice the pain. Or you're bitter and depressed, able to keep going as long as you're sharing your suffering. Or maybe you love your team so much it blinds you to your pain, going full-on power of friendship. Fury Beyond Fury definitely works, of course, 
course, I'm just saying there are other options. Of course, our next option, the Berserker, probably won't use them because they are the barbarianiest barbarian to ever barbarian. This is the barbarian willing to break their own body just to hurt you a little more, fully giving way to the mindless rage. You eventually gain immunity to being charmed and frightened while raging, can frighten your opponent as an action, and eventually get to use your reaction as a counterattack. And right from the start, you get your frenzy, a special type of rage, getting an extra attack every round in exchange for a level of exhaustion at the end of your rage, which basically doubles your damage output at lower levels. Now, I worded it like this to bring attention to a common misconception. Frenzy is a special type of rage, and it does not modify your basic rage. So while it does have a downside, you can easily save it for big battles and never have much of an issue. For someone who wants that extra boost when their back is to a wall, to howl with rage and go even further beyond, Berserker is a fine choice. Although this pit's rage is anchor more than pretty much any subtype, I'd like to point out that this can easily be a state of thoughtless instinct. Fully in the zone, everything else fading away, moving without thought. You could have it be some sort of hidden technique where you take off your restraints and unlock your body's full power but damage it in the process. Have it be a state of hyper-awareness or just fully giving in to your do-or-die survival mode, every unnecessary thought removed until the situation is over, then all that stress crashing down in a wave. Now if you want to truly descend into feral fury, the Beast Barbarian is the way to go. Maybe your mom was a druid or you won a blessing at a satyr drinking contest, or Billy Bob the Astral Bullfrog decided to take a nap in you. Whatever your reason, you can draw on the power of the beast. Forget weapons, you can choose a natural weapon when you rage. A life-draining bite, a flurry of claws, or a tail with reach that lets you increase your AC as a reaction. And you'll want to get used to them. Eventually getting hit by them can force a creature to either take psychic damage or attack your choice of their allies as your feral fury grows. Eventually you can even spread your power to the rest of your team, giving them bonus damage and yourself temporary HP. The Beast Barbarian even gets something outside of range. At level 6, you can modify your body to swim or climb or jump when you're taking a short rest. If what you're wanting is an animalistic rage, the Beast Barbarian is head of the pack. And they give so many examples of an origin for your rage, it's kinda hard to add to it. Probably because they didn't make you choose which animal to emulate. Just keep it in theme and change as you go. Though I can imagine a Warforged not even needing to go with animals, using exposed gears for jaws, or ripping out some wires for a tail, or even a button to like and subscribe. Press please, K thanks. But I really do love that they made a sort of everything lycanthrope, because I know a lot of people want to be one. We continue the theme of nature barbarians with the Storm Herald, this time bringing the fury of a literal storm in a swirling ten-foot aura whenever they rage. Not just lightning though, there are three different biomes to choose from. Desert burns everyone around them and can eventually retaliate with fire when hit. The sea calls down a lightning strike and can later knock creatures prone. Tundra barbarians give temporary HP to allies and eventually freeze creatures in place. You also gain resistance to your element at level 6, as well as some neat powers like setting things on fire, gaining a swim speed, and freezing water to ice. Eventually you can share your resistance with allies as well, especially useful for the desert one. They don't really get to choose who takes that fire damage. You can change which one you are at level up if you're not really liking it, but you're mostly stuck with your decision. For the rough flavoring, Demigod. Or part giant, dragon, monstrosity, basically a melee focused sorcerer. Maybe go even further, say your clan infuses you with an elemental at your coming of age ceremony or something. Assuming you're gonna pick one and stick with it at least, which I personally do, but I can understand changing it. I honestly don't have much for this one. It has a lot of variety on its own, but it's pretty clear cut with what you can do with it. You're an embodiment of nature's power, a literal weather person. You probably knew if you wanted to go this route just by the title. Actually, in a similar vein, we have the totem warrior, but instead of weather, we have animals. Again, this time instead of shifting halfway like a lycanthrope, you just channel the abilities of different animals. You can use beast sense and speak with animals as a ritual, as well as commune with nature later, but that's not why you're really here. At level 3, 6, and 14, you can choose between powers based on the bear, eagle, elk, tiger, and wolf. You can mix and match these, which people forget, but I am not listing all 16. 60% of you have already wandered off, I'll just list them on the board, okay? Every set has at least a few really good ones, like giving allies advantage when whacking enemies next to you to simulate pack tactics, or the eagle letting you fly a little, or the bear letting you resist almost all types of damage. This is a good example of how you can approach a similar subject in multiple ways. Overlapping subclass ideas don't necessarily step on each other's toes. My main question is why they have to be those specific animals. Trick question, they don't, or at least they shouldn't. I say to go wild with it. The bear is a warthog, the tiger is a frog, the wolf is a peacock since apparently they get pack tactics? And why leave it there? Give me the wings of a griffin or the charge of a minotaur, the endurance of a demon or an elemental. Make one for a group of people. Make one for a specific 
specific people. Who's gonna stop me? I'm bad with power. Sorry, you went on a little wild there. Speaking of out of control, wild magic. I used to flavor the barbarian as a sorcerer whose magic went inward to enhance their bodies instead of outward to cast their spells. The wild magic is that concept improved. Whether it's an unrefined bloodline power or they just spent too much time with a fae, these barbarians are surging with raw magical might. Whenever they rage, one of eight beneficial effects happen at random, and these are actually all helpful. Life drain, teleport, summon exploding fey, make your weapon magic, hurt people who hit you, give allies an AC bonus, make the area around you difficult terrain, or hurt and blind people. Later on, you can reroll whenever you hit or fail a save, and eventually you roll twice and choose whichever you want. You can also give people a once per turn D3 bonus to any attack or ability check for 10 minutes, or restore caster's no level spell slot. It's all that zany fun of wild magic without the potentially annoyed teammates. And you still have the bulk and power of the barbarian in case you don't get what you want. You can't really reflavor this outside of maybe worshipping a chaos deity, but this subquest flavors itself. If you're wanting to roll with the punches as you dish out your own, wild magic is perfect. Okay, one left, but you probably already know if you want the zealot. They're exactly what they sound like, a barbarian with a cause. They aren't just raging, they have hit a cult-like fervor that would make a paladin worried. And it is divine. Whenever they rage, they do additional necrotic or radiant damage on their first hit per turn. And while others consider dying for the cause to be the ultimate sacrifice, to the zealot, that's the starting line. Because revival spells don't need material components if cast on them. You don't need hundreds in diamond dust. A god already marked them with a get out of death free card. Eventually, death starts struggling to hold them at all, staying conscious even when they're at zero and rolling death saves. And if they die, they keep fighting anyway until the rage is over, and will even stay alive if they're healed before they stop. They're pitching such a fit that even death doesn't want them. Honestly, working in customer service, can't blame them. Once per rage, they can reroll a failed saving throw, and even get a battle cry at level 10 that gives your allies advantage on attack rolls and saving throws for a round. The Zella is devotion incarnate. If that sounds good to you, I highly recommend. Honestly, you don't really need to recontextualize this one, as being marked by a god or faith has as much variety as there are faiths to choose, but I'd like to throw out the idea of an eternal holy warrior. Whenever the temple or world is threatened, the clerics will run to the mausoleum, bringing the honored heroes of old to return to their sworn duties. Perhaps you're just that, thousands of years old, risen to rid the land of evil before returning to your tomb, then killed once again to feast with your god until your surface is needed again. And maybe that's why you're level 1 again. You got rusty in the afterlife and started losing abilities. Anyway, believe it or not, Zella is the last alphabetically. The barbarian is a wonderful class that proves how much variety you can have with a simple trope of strong person what hits stuff. And there's plenty more variation just by swapping in different species or feats. I know every dwarf and orc at least considers it, but anyone can be a barbarian. A halfling that's always upset it's not mealtime. Or a gnome working out bits of frustration over their latest invention not working right. Or a goblin ancestral guardian who bites your ankles and runs out of reach. The ability doesn't end just because you ran away. Have fun with the spirit of goblins past, nerd. But I think that's enough of that. Hopefully one of these have piqued your interest, but if not, there's 12 other classes to choose from, I'd recommend looking into Fighter or Ranger if this didn't quite scratch the itch. Special thanks to my coffee supporters like Feral Goblin and Sergeant Daniels. Your support helps me upgrade my equipment. The link's in the description if you want to help, but I'm not big enough to put it in the video yet. Either way though, I'm here and free. Class dismissed!